Hi guys, it's Misty, and I wanted to go ahead and finish up the uh, sorting activity that we started in class today. So you should have picked up the worksheet in class today, um, and you should basically be done color coding and cutting it. If you're not, you need to do that before you start this video. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the sorting activity together in this video really quick. That way you guys can go ahead and start with the pasting. Uh, tomorrow in class. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to just sort by elements. Anything that has only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen put in one pile and anything that has nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, I mean carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen too, but if it's got a nitrogen, a sulfur, or a phosphorus, put it in a secondary pile of anything else. So um, pile one, just carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Pile two, anything else. Be really careful on the ring structures because some of the ring structures have a nitrogen hidden in them that is not outlined in yellow. So double check your ring structures to make sure that there's not a little nitrogen hiding in the ring. So once you do that, I want to look at the ones that only have the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. Um, and we're going to just sort those kind of based on how they look. And that's really it, just how they look. So I'm going to make piles, um, like I've got these long skinny ones with just the green, and then I have these that are just orange and red, that are chains but just orange and red. I've got some single ring structures that are pretty much just red. Um, I've got some double ring structures. That one shouldn't have been there. It had a nitrogen. Um, I've got the double ring structures that are just the red, and then I've got some weird structures that have four rings. Um, and I'm going to put all the four ring ones together, all the long skinny ones with the green together, uh, the long chains of about six together, and then the rings that are just red together. And we're going to go ahead and figure out what those are. So these six chains I've stacked up, and then I'm taking the rings and stacking them up. And I'm going to show you why in just a second. So um, let's get rid of the long skinny ones and the four ring ones. So if you look at these, these are my single ring and double ring structures. And if you look at the single ring and double ring structures, you'll notice that those single rings are found in the double ring structures. And then those six that I put at the bottom that are basically the same, those are open sugar rings. Um, and if you look online, you can see those. Those are all my carbohydrates. And we'll break those down into the different categories of carbohydrates tomorrow in class. These remaining structures, my four fused carbon rings, and then I have these long skinny ones. The four fused carbon rings are my steroids. Yeah, steroids. So those are steroids. I gave you three examples. The long skinny ones with just the carboxyl group, these are fatty acid chains. And they look really different, but they have the same chemical properties. And so we'll talk about how lipids are, are similar in class over the next couple days. But these are going to go into the same pile, and that pile is... The, um, the category of macromolecule that includes steroids and fatty acids, and like I said, that is lipids. So we're going to go ahead, steroids, fatty acids, those are both lipids. So stick those in a second pile. Now once you get that done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sort everything else that's left, all right? So I'm going to just do this by color. I'm going to take these ones that had the purple and stick them in one pile. Anything that's got a yellow and green together on the, like a yellow on one side and a green on the other side, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green. I'm going to put those all in one. And then these weird ring straight, ring shaped structures that have a bunch of orange and red, I'm going to stick those in a, in a third pile. Now some of these orange and red ring structures also have some yellow on them, but they don't have the green. So I'm, I'm keeping them kind of separate. And we're actually going to deal with those first. So go ahead and keep those out. Put the yellow and green ones off to the side. And you'll notice that these ring structures, there's, there's five of them. There's five single ring structures, if you look at them. Um, and there's two that have a double ring, and there's three that are single ring. And you know what these are. These are guanine, cytosine, adenine, thymine, and uracil, your nitrogenous bases, the bases that make up your DNA. So they're your nitrogenous bases. We can just call them nitrogen bases for short. Um, and then if you look at the ones that had the double ring, these, you'll notice that that top ring is just one of the, the five nitrogen bases. So those are also going to be related. And if you look at the bottom ring structure right there, those are a ribose sugar. So all I did was add a ribose sugar to one of my nitrogen bases, and that makes what we call a nucleotide. Okay, so I'm going to put my nucleotides off to the side. And then I'm going to deal with the weird purple guys. So the weird purple guys, you'll notice, just have one phosphate, two phosphates, three phosphates. What you might not have noticed is that if you take those nucleotides, the nucleotides 
plus the phosphates equal those purple structures. Those are what we call nucleosides, nucleosides, okay? So you can see that those structures all kind of build on one another. Those are all examples of nucleic acids, okay? Nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, all right? This last group of molecules we're going to look at is our proteins. It has to be proteins because they're the only one of the macromolecules we have left. And if you notice, on all of them, there's a yellow on the left, green on the right, yellow on the left, green on the right. Sorry, they're kind of out of focus. Yellow on the left, green on the right, yellow on the left, green on the right. There's a whole bunch of them. And you'll notice the only part that's different is the part that's hanging off the bottom of the center. So I actually want to talk about the structure of these. So I have my amino group on the left, and I know I didn't write it in yellow, get over it. And then on the right, I have my C double O H group. So the C double bonded to the oxygen and the OH. That's my carboxyl group. What's different is what's hanging off that bottom, that center area. That's called the functional groups. Those are amino acids. That's it. You should have them all sorted for class tomorrow.